In this video, I'm going to walk you through the basics of how to dress for mountain biking. Welcome back to Dusty Betty. My name is Tess and in today's video I want to walk you through the basics of how to dress for mountain biking. There are a lot of different categories for mountain biking apparel and those correspond with different disciplines within mountain biking. But for the purposes of today's video, I'm just going to focus on trail slash all mountain. This is a pretty typical style of apparel for most recreational riders. Now, if you're just starting out riding, a lot of the other athletic and outdoor apparel you already have might be working just fine for your needs. But in this video, I am going to talk a little bit about some of the specific features in apparel that is designed for mountain biking. I will cover a few things that are considered do's and don'ts amongst mountain bikers when it comes to how you dress, but we're just talking about how to dress for riding bikes. We're not saving lives, so take it as seriously as you want. Before we dive into our topic, I wanted to let you know that today's video is sponsored by Competitive Cyclist, and they're offering Dusty Betty viewers 15% off their first order when using the code DUSTYBETTY15. Competitive Cyclist is an online retailer. They sell bikes, parts, tools, gear, apparel. One of the things that I really like about shopping apparel on Competitive Cyclist is that they carry a variety of brands so that you can shop through and find the brands that fit your body type best. Make sure you head over to CompetitiveCyclist.com and use the code DUSTYBETTY15 to get 15% off your first order. In today's video, I'll be walking you through some of my favorite pieces of apparel and I will be linking all of those items in the description below. All right, first things first, let's talk about liners, also sometimes called a chamois. These are tight fitted shorts with a padded seat area. These are essentially your underwear when you ride the bike. And I say that because it's good to understand that they are not meant to be worn with underwear, they are meant to be underwear when you're wearing them. And just knowing that can save you some uncomfortable experiences with chafing. Some people wear liners every single ride. I know a few people who don't like wearing liners at all. Then there are people like me who sometimes I wear them, sometimes I don't if I'm just going out for a really short ride. But I do think a chamois is a great thing to have. It's also good to have a couple different brands because they all have seams and lines in different places and so it's nice if you're riding back to back days especially long mile days it can be good to have a couple different brands to filter through so that you're not getting rubbed raw in the same places day after day let me talk you through my favorite chamois first i want to show you my club ride june shorts these are liners that have kind of a thinner padding in the seat area thinner than most chamois and I love that because it does take the sting away when you're sitting in the saddle but having it be less bulky is actually really really comfortable it makes for a very comfortable ride you don't feel like you're wearing a diaper so much so that is why I love this short they advertise it as kind of a one hour chamois because it is lighter padding but I find it pretty comfortable for several hours worth of riding my other favorite chamois is made by Zoic. It's the Zoic Essential Liner. This has a pretty typical amount of padding for a chamois, but the thing that really makes this chamois comfortable is that it has a yoga top style waistband. So what that means is it's not gonna be gripping around you super tight if you are the type of person who doesn't like that feeling. It's much gentler on the waist. I even wore this all the way through my entire pregnancy and uh, it's still one of my favorites just because it's so comfortable fitting around the waist. Now as the name liners suggest, we are going to layer our liners with another pair of shorts, which are simply just called shorts or some people call them baggies. A pretty typical length for shorts in this type of mountain biking would be somewhere between the top and the bottom of the knee. I'll talk you through a couple of my favorite shorts just so that you can see some of the features that I look for in a mountain biking short. The first ones I'm gonna show you are the Club Ride Ventura short. I just ordered a second pair of these from Competitive Cyclist because they're a really great staple for me. Um, for these ones, I just get a really nice fit. A lot of mountain bike shorts tend to be a little too baggy on me, and I get a really great fit out of the Ventura. Um, they are also a lightweight material that is extremely durable. Um, most of the shorts that I wear most of the time have very little stretchy. The more stretch a material has, uh, the more comfortable it will be, but it's also going to typically be less durable. 
I have some shorts that are a little bit on the stretchier side, but I usually only ride those on mellow trails because I ruined a pair of shorts that way. <laughs> So like I said, the Ventura are great because they are lightweight and they are durable. They also have nice big pockets, big enough to put a phone and keys in. I don't ride with my phone in my pocket because I cracked a phone screen that way once, but I really like them being big enough for that so that if I'm going anywhere on my way to or from riding that I can stick my phone in there, run into the store. So they also get two thumbs up for pocket size because that's a touchy topic with women's shorts. The next shorts that I wanted to show you are made by Zoic. I'm not going to pronounce the name because I will probably blow it, but I will make sure that I list that in the description below. Um, but this is just kind of their standard women's mountain bike short. It's a really, really great fit on me. They're probably even still just a teeny bit baggy, but I realize that I kind of have bird legs, but I feel like they are still a really nice and flattering fit. I love the camo. They've got that tear resistant material, very minimal stretch. So you get a little bit of comfort, but you're really getting that durability. And um, that lightweight material is very soft on the outside as well. One thing I would dock them one star for is that the front side pockets are not as deep as would be ideal. Not a deal breaker, but it's a good thing to know about these shorts. They're big enough that you could stick your gloves in the pockets if you were stopping to take a picture or something. Now, even though I mentioned that kind of the standard length for mountain biking shorts is somewhere above or just below the knee, in women's apparel, you can find some mid-length shorts. I have a couple pair and I do find myself reaching for those from time to time in the hot summer. One thing that I will note for you guys as we're talking about shorts length is if you wear knee pads when you ride, it is considered uncool to have a gap of skin showing between the top of your knee pads and the hem of your shorts. Do whatever you want, but I just thought that that's kind of a good thing to know. For me, I do typically wear my longer shorts if I'm going to wear knee pads, but if I'm going on a mellower ride, leaving the knee pads at home, those are often the rides where I will reach for more of a mid-length short, something like the Club Ride Eden. I really like them. They're not super short. They have really great pockets in them, and these also um, cross over really well as a hiking short. Let's talk about jerseys. Like most athletic wear and outdoor apparel, mountain bike jerseys are made of lightweight, breathable, moisture wicking material. But they do have some features that are a little more specific to mountain biking. Some mountain biking jerseys will have pockets that you could stick a multi-tool, some might even hold a bottle or other things like that because some people like to travel light at times and maybe not carry a pack with them. Mountain bike jerseys also tend to be a little bit longer to avoid having your shirt creep up when you're riding since you are leaned over the bike when you're riding. One other thing that I've noticed with women specific mountain biking jerseys is that a lot of them are cut either with darts or other clothing construction methods to help them fit nicely across the small of the back. I really like this because it helps avoid bunching of the fabric when you're wearing a hip pack or a backpack with a waist belt. The first jersey I'm going to show you is the Club Ride Ida. I actually love these so much that I have a couple of them because I wear them a ton. Now this is a long sleeve jersey you'll notice, but it is also a warm weather jersey. The sleeves are made out of a really lightweight pinhole mesh that breathes extremely well when you're moving. So when I'm riding down the trail on my bike, it's about as close as I can get to wearing a tank top without actually having to have my skin all vulnerable and exposed. Another great thing about the Ida jersey is that it does have one side back pocket that is decent size. I really like this jersey. I wear it a lot. It's definitely a staple for me. The next jersey I'm going to show you is one that I just recently got from Competitive Cyclists. It's the Club Ride Deer Abbey jersey. I've had my eye on this one for a really long time. It's got really nice ruching detail along the side, a great fit, and it's got these awesome pockets in the back that are pretty good size. As you can see, it's nice and long, so it gives you lots of coverage and you don't have to worry about your hem creeping up you as you ride. Next is my Fly Flow Jesse jersey. It's the one I'm wearing right now. This is another one that I just got from Competitive and I'm really liking it because I love raglan style sleeves. It's made out of a nice lightweight material and it is UPF 50. So it will help block a lot of the sun that would otherwise penetrate through the material when you're out on the trail. This is another jersey that is nice and long so you don't have to worry about it riding up when you're out on the trail. 
It also fits really nicely across the back. It's a really great pattern and design. A quick word about socks. I like to avoid cotton because I feel like these tend to get sweatier and stinkier quicker. Other than that, you know, wear the socks that you want. I would say crew length socks are probably the most common, maybe followed pretty closely by the high ankle socks. It is kind of considered uncool if you wear the really low, no C ankle socks, but they're socks. I really like merino wool. Um, so I have some darn tough socks that have been great. Another brand that a lot of mountain bikers really like are Sock Guy, and I will link a bunch of those below because crazy wild fun sock fashion is a real part of mountain biking culture for a lot of people. So check those out because they have some really fun prints. Let's talk about mountain biking shoes. I'm just going to focus on flat pedal shoes today because I feel like for newer riders, I definitely recommend starting out on flat pedals so that you can just focus on learning the ins and outs of learning to ride single track for the first time and uh, riding flat pedal shoes will help keep the process a little bit simpler for you in the beginning. So mountain biking specific shoes tend to have a nice stiff supportive sole. A lot of them will have uh, also a little bit of stiffness and protection in the upper part of the shoe and you'll notice that a lot of these kind of are reminiscent of a skate shoe. Some people actually when they're starting out will ride just a pair of Vans shoes and um, those do tend to have a pretty grippy sole but um, one thing you'll notice is they don't always have quite as much support. They might be a little bit flexier and flex around the pedal but a lot of people start out on those and do really well. I also like that a good flat pedal shoe will have a rubber compound that is grippier than most of the rubber you'll find on other shoes. I also think tread pattern is kind of important to take a look at with these mountain bike specific shoes because you'll notice if you compare them to like a trail running shoe or something like that, the lugs on them, they're not very tall because like with a skateboard shoe, you actually want to have a lot of contact area with the surface that you're working with, which is actually your pedals in this case. So a good pair of mountain bike pedals will have metal pins that will sink into this grippy rubber compound and just give you a really, really nice hold so that you don't feel like you're coming off the pedals as you ride down the trail. This is the Ride Concepts Hellion. This is a slightly more aggressive shoe, which can be a great option if you're riding um, aggressive terrain and you need a little bit more support and protection. If you're just starting out but you still want some good support and some of the great features of a mountain biking specific shoe, check out the Ride Concepts Livewire. Next I want to talk about eyewear. So wearing some kind of sunglasses or eyewear is obviously going to protect your eyes from the sun, but it also helps protect your eyes from other things that come up in the trail, things like dust and rocks and wind. When you're riding, there's pretty much constant wind and your eyes will get kind of watery and dried out if you don't have something. There's absolutely nothing wrong with wearing the sunglasses that you already have. And a lot of people will just pick up a pair of clear safety glasses from the local hardware store and that's what they wear um, for night riding or lower light conditions. I'm an ambassador for Jewel Boat Eyewear. I really like their reactive lenses which get lighter and darker and adjust to uh, the conditions wherever you are. These are the Aerospeed Light AF. The AF stands for Asian frame for people with more petite faces like me. You see these kind of two different lines. This one is made out of a plasticky kind of soft plastic and underneath this is kind of more of like some kind of silicone -y rubber or something so that you get a lot of gentle flex. So these actually, um, all of the Aerospeeds have that. Uh, feature and they all sit very very lightly behind the ears so that you don't get headaches. Next I'm going to show you my Jewel Bow Furies. They also have this nice flexible piece that sits lightly behind the ear so that you don't get sore. These do not have reactive lenses but I actually wear these quite a lot because where I'm living right now in the desert we are in a lot of full sun so sometimes I don't need my reactive lenses and these are also kind of cool they're a little bit rock and roll uh, but they have the same comfort that you get from pretty much all the jewel bows. Next let's go over gloves. So most mountain bikers do go for a full fingered glove. Wearing gloves when you ride is going to help give you consistent grip even if your hands are sweaty even if the conditions are changing. They also protect your hands because you're gonna start getting calluses right here on your hand as you start mountain biking, um, but wearing gloves will help it not be quite as bad. 
Wearing gloves will also help protect the back of your hands from things like branches as you're riding or, heaven forbid, in a crash, they will offer you some protection from rocks and other things you might encounter as well. I tend to go for a little bit lighter weight glove because it's hot where I live, but you can find more armored ones if you're looking for something with a little bit more protection. This year I'm running these Endura women specific gloves. They've had a really great fit and they also have a really awesome nose wipe so you get this nice soft terry kind of material across the thumb so that when it's windy and your nose starts running you can wipe all those boogies away and then just take them home and throw them in the wash. All right let's talk about helmets next. I'm riding for laser this year so I will be showing you my laser Impala with MIPS. So this category of helmet they usually have pretty good ventilation so you get some good breathability. They typically also give you a sun visor which is actually really practical. These help quite a bit. They're less focused on aerodynamics than what you would see from a cross-country helmet. Cross-country helmets also usually don't have the sun visor. Another feature that I really like that modern helmets typically have is they have a little wheel on the back that you can use to give a little more tightening to it once you fit it on your head. And that just really gives you the confidence that your helmet is going to stay put and snug and it's going to protect you when you need it. So normally I would just put this on my head, get it clipped in place, and then I just tighten the wheel down until it's nice and snug. For those of you who are more experienced with mountain biking and dressing for mountain biking, share your love with all the new riders in the comments below. Share some of the things that you have learned. If you've enjoyed this video, check out this other one because I think you might like it. Don't forget to go to competitivecyclist.com and use the code DUSTYBETTY15 to get 15% off your first order. Thanks so much for watching. Big thanks to my patrons. Get dusty.